Canberra is our only planned capital city and home to some of our more elegant works of architecture, like the Australian Academy of Science. And just over the road is the Art Deco-inspired National Film and Sound Archive. In the more austere heart of the building, a team of archivists, preservation experts and technicians are preserving our cultural heritage. Rita Parkinson is a film technician and spends her day working through the massive archive, checking the status of each film due for restoration. Australia, compared to other parts of the world, is such a young country and so much of our history is on film. Anything that we have that brings the past to us now and that we can restore and share with future generations, it's a wonderful thing to be able to do. It brings the past back to us now and hopefully the future will benefit from that. We get films from all sorts of places, donations, people that just find films in their grandmother's shed and don't know what's on it. We get to look at them and, and let them know. We also get Indigenous films where there could be sensitive material, so we have to respect that aspect of it. Films in good shape are simply copied, but some require weeks of meticulous restoration. In a soundproof room, Mark Hogan is an audio specialist. I work on all the sound earliest formats from cylinders right through, I go as far as LPs, and then I call it a day because it's getting a bit too modern then. Mostly I'm involved in preservation work, getting the sound off various carriers that are badly deteriorated, like this one here. This is a lacquer disc, which is uh, one of our biggest headaches because this is what happens to lacquer discs. Eventually the lacquer actually starts to break off. You don't know what you're going to get with these because they use all sorts of things as test cuts. Members of the jury, have you agreed upon your verdict? We have, Your Honour. How do you find? We find the defendant, Margaret Saunders, guilty of witchcraft. <laughs> so it's obviously part of a play. If you look carefully here, you can see that there are all lines of broken lacquer. That's what all the crackle is coming from. If it's historically important, then we spend quite a bit of time putting these things together. Some of the earliest recordings are on wire, or even older, are once popular songs recorded on wax cylinders that go back to 1877. This is a cylinder. It basically like a giant thread, like a screw thread. It winds its way along. The first recordings were done on cylinder. Edison made a tinfoil cylinder and he recorded Mary Had a Lamb and played it back. Too bad for your eardrums. Not everybody has these kind of machines to play this stuff, but once I've made a digital file of that, and I've made it accessible to everybody. All of us here have our own personal love of film and we feel we're contributing a bit to future generations. Generations behind me are going to be able to listen to it and they can say, thank him for doing that. <laughs>